Hi, and welcome to our video where we spend two days discovering the magnificent UNESCO recognised city of Bath. Bath can be found in the southwest of England, roughly 95 miles from the centre of London. We will pick a central point in Bath and explore the city, pointing out highlights on the way. All this on foot, after all, Bath is a very walkable city. And we'll have a little recap after the sun has gone down. So without further ado, let's get started. And what better place than in Bath Street? The first thing that strikes you is the grand architecture from a bygone era. And I think that's Bath in a nutshell. Grand, but not pretentious. Just for reference, we're under half a mile from Bath Spa Station. A leisurely 10 minute walk. I'll add links to all the places I mentioned in the description below, so be sure to check them out for further information. Let's now step into Abbey Churchyard, and for me this is the centre of Bath. There are places to stop and watch the world go by, and places like the pump room for morning brunches and afternoon tea. It's here you'll find the Roman baths, and we have a full video on that which I'll pop up at the end. It's also a place where you can find surprises, like Miranda Keys. Obviously we need to take a look in Bath Abbey. And again I have a full video on that which I'll place at the end. As I said Bath is extremely walkable and you just turn a corner and you're into another little area to explore. We're in the historic heart of Bath and these are some of the oldest parts of the city. We have narrow lanes and traffic free passages that lead to interesting courtyards such as Abbey Gardens. You'll find so much character in these places, plus plenty of watering holes. And it's a stone's throw from here you'll find Sally Lunn's Eating House, which is reputedly one of Bath's oldest houses with records dating back as far as 1482. It then became famous as the birthplace of the Sally Lunn Bun and you're free to give it a try for yourself. Have you had a Sally Lum bun? Or is it known by another name in your part of the world? Drop us a comment below, we'd love to hear from you. And we're now going from one historic part of town to another, just over half a mile away. We've arrived at the Circus, a masterpiece of Georgian architecture by John Wood the Elder. Although he died three months after the first stone was laid and the project was completed by his son, John Wood the Younger. This ring of townhouses is split into three equal segments. As we make our way to our next destination, we discover Margaret's Buildings, a little lane full of independent shops, and the Greenbird Cafe was a great place for a spot of brunch. And our next destination? Why, the Royal Crescent, of course. Another piece of fine Georgian architecture designed by John Wood the Younger following on his father's legacy. If you want to know more about Georgian life then I recommend Number One Royal Crescent, a fabulous museum experience that brings the story of the world both upstairs and downstairs to life, and perhaps a touch of Bridgerton too. Again we have another video on that. Royal Crescent was built between 1767 and 1774. Below it is the Royal Victoria Park, one of the many green spaces in Bath. It is possible to pick up a two bus to give you a unique view of the city from four metres up. We stuck to ground level.
Just outside the gates of Royal Victoria Park, on the Royal Avenue, you will find the War Memorial with its Cross of Sacrifice. It's just a short saunter to Queen Square, again designed and laid out by John Wood the Elder. It's clear to see the impact of this father and son combination on the look of Bath at the time. And despite the Baedeker Blitz, most buildings were restored after the war. Just a minute away and we reached Saw Close with its Renaissance style blue coat house at the corner. Hard to believe the area in front of us was once a car park. Here you'll find the Theatre Royal Bath. Our exploration continues and we find ourselves at Kingsmead Square and again pick up a street performer. Head on along James Street West and we pass the Bath Brew House. The end of the line for us is Green Park Station. Trains no longer stop here but it's now home to flourishing markets, independent shops, restaurants and cafes. But when we went it wasn't open. Time for another jump to the Bath Assembly Rooms just off the circus. Step inside it's free and enjoy the elegance. Bath's Fashion Museum will be moving in October 22, but don't worry, it will be finding a new home. I brought you back this way to show you another side to Bath, via Alfred Street. We're going to head west via Hay Hill. There's something so charming about Bath. We have now reached the Paragon. And we're going to cross, but this is a busy one. Take this narrow little staircase and we end up at Walcott Street. Once again a quirky little array of shops and eateries, well worth checking out if you're in the area. I don't think you can beat a street with glitter balls. Our next jump takes us back to Alfred Street. The reason? I want to take you on another route through Bath, this time down Bartlett Street. I don't remember Bath as hilly, but the evidence is that it does have a slope or two. As we head down we reach George Street, once again a busy street. Just off George Street is Milsom Street where things get a little classy. And at the bottom you get Old Bond Street and New Bond Street. Running parallel is Queen Street and the Raven Pub, which gets a thumbs up from me. Looking back up Queen Street and you discover the Gym Bar. As you wander through Bath, discovering places like Beaufort Square, you wonder, what's that? That's the back of the Theatre Royal. There are so many places, like the Corridor, to explore, all of it adds to Bath's charm. How are you finding our look at Bath? If you're enjoying it, why not give us a like, we'd appreciate that. You can always leave us a comment, we'd love to know what you think about this video, or your experience of Bath. And finally, why not subscribe so you can catch more of our travels as we explore near and far. So another place to check out is right next to Bath's Guildhall, and that's the Guildhall Market. This is another chunk of nostalgia for me. I feel like I've stepped back in time. There's something very local about the Guildhall Market. I love the sign in the centre, confirming what I thought. Everything local is close by, the rest of the world's out there, somewhere. Next to the Guildhall Market is the Victoria Art Gallery, worth taking time out to have a look around. From the Victoria Art Gallery you'll step onto the Grand Parade, and if you follow the road around you'll arrive at Pierpont Street, overlooking Parade Gardens. There is a nominal fee to enter the gardens, but it's a great place to relax and unwind. I 
I really should mention the former Empire Hotel. Built in 1901, but not to everyone's tastes. But I think it's beautiful. Next, the Pontley Bridge over the River Avon and that magnificent weir. This Georgian masterpiece, designed by Robert Adam, shares a feature with the Ponte Vecchio in Florence and the Rialto Bridge in Venice. That is, it is entirely lined with shops on either side. In fact, there are only four bridges in the world like that. Do you know the fourth? Go on, show off. Drop us the answer in the comments. Once again, as you make your way along Argyle Street, you're blessed with unique and individual shops, bars and cafes. Once you pass the Laura Place Fountain, you enter Great Pontley Street. And all of this grandeur is linked to Sir William Pontley, the 18th century advocate, landowner and politician who made a vast amount of his wealth from the slave trade. Whilst you can't turn back time, you must acknowledge the cruelty in creating this beauty. Whilst we look like we've walked a distance, it's only 500 metres to the Holborn Museum from Pontley Bridge. Who recognises this from Bridgerton, Lady Danbury's home? But in reality, it's still very much a museum and art gallery. From here, we will see another side of Bath life, and that's on the Kennet and Avon Canal, less than five minutes away. We've chugged along this stretch of water a few years back for one of Janice's significant birthdays and there's no better way to enjoy life than at three miles per hour. Now I wouldn't say life in Bath is hectic, but if you do want to get away from it all, come and explore the canal. Once again it was great to see a family enjoying life on a narrowboat and the pace was so slow I thought I needed to speed it up. By following the towpath south you'll reach the River Raven. But don't worry, it's not even a mile from Holborn Museum. We can now take an amble back to Pontley Bridge. And as day turns to dusk, I'd like to take you for a little look around the city after the lights have come on. Our overriding memory of our time in Bath was one of warmth and friendship. As the evening rolled on we felt safe in the city. Obviously you need to take the same precautions as you would anywhere, but it just felt nice. This was captured on a Monday and Tuesday in late June. I hope you're encouraged to visit Bath. I know we'll be back. I'll pop a link in the corner to help you search out your ideal accommodation. I really hope you like what we put together for you. Remember that like. Stay safe, stay well and happy travels.